I'm ready for some high school football on News Channel 12. <laughs> it's a frightful thought. The end of the regular season. Yeah. Some teams getting a treat by winning a trophy, while others touch the great pumpkin for the final time. So it is time for some spectacular highlights on this weekend edition of the Blitz. <laughs> What a tangled web we weave in the Eastern Plains Conference. Help me! Wow! West Craven and Southwest Edgecombe both wanted to wrap up the league title. We unmasked the Coastal Conference champion. Was it Northside of Beaufort County? Who's got my name? I got your name! Or was it Pamela? Move! Move! And White Oak conjuring up ghosts from the past, trying to win their first outright league title since 1983. All right, kitties, gather round. It's time to find out who is booing and who is ooing. The Blitz are there! <laughs> <laughs> It's the final night of the regular season. Conference championships up for grabs and playoff spots on the line everywhere you look. Let's start with our Mac Daddy's premier matchup. The only game in our area where it was winner take all was West Craven and Southwest Edgecombe. Luke Schwartz is in Pine Tops to show us what happened in this thriller. Not only was the thriller on the field, but your costume tonight, Brian, loved the Wolverine beard. But this one was two teams that were both 7-2, and two, both on a five-game win streak, and could clinch conference with a winner-take-all. So let's jump right in to our Mac Daddy's Blitz premiere matchup. Let's check this one out here. It's the Cougars, and it's the West Craven Eagles. Take a look here. They're bumping on the field right now at halftime. It's 21-14 leading it for Wes Craven. And it's going to be Malik Brown who scores, but they'll still trail 21 to 20. And now it's Mike Twitchell's turn and his team to get fired up. But this time it's Southwest Edgecombe. Going to run it in here. And who gets the score? It's Jalen Willoughby. He points at the camera and says, hey, News Channel 12, watch this. And of course, Mike Twitchell, there he is. But how about his sophomore quarterback, DJ Davis has done it all for this team this season. He calls his own number and takes it in himself. Folks, now it's 28-26, fourth quarter. You need two to tie. So he's gonna search here, look for somebody. He's gonna reverse the field. Can he find anybody? Nope, he says, you know what? I'm gonna take it in myself once again. 28-28, guess what guys? He's still got two years left of high school football and he's playing like that in just year two. And here's the big kick right here for Wes Craven. You just got to kick it out of bounds, and then you have to rely on your defense. Rely on it? Nope. And it's going to be taken almost to the house, this time by Jakari Lovely, who says, thank you very much. I'll take that. Sideline getting hyped, and it all comes down to this big-time kick. It's Aiden Newtson with ice in his veins. Sinks the game winner, and Southwest Edgecombe wins 31 to 28 in a big time nail biter. All right, let's head on over to Farmville Central. This was a big time matchup between the Jaguars, who hosted North Pitt on senior night. Check out this banner right here. If you a senior and you trying to see, let's go ski. <laughs> Gotta love it. Hey, and we talked to Alex Moy before this game. I said, hey, you're gonna score two touchdowns in this one. He just smiled at me and smirked. Well, there's number one right there as CJ Wilson tries to encourage his team. And how about go back to him again? He's looking like Odell Beckham Jr. Reaches up, one hand grab. He's got coast is clear running down the sideline. Is anybody gonna catch him? Uh, yes, he does get caught. But what does coach say? Let's score right here. And that's exactly what the Jaguars plan to do. Here's Landon Barnes out of the pocket. He finds his guy, Alex Moy. And it's the Jaguars getting the big senior win, 46 to 30, and they clinch their third place in conference in this one. All right, Mr. Wolverine, I'm sending it back to you in the studio. All right, thank you, Luke. A good job. Eastern Plains, Washington, and Aiden Griffin both looking for their first conference win to end their season. They met in Littlefield and the Pam Pack trying to get that first conference title, and they're going to do it on the ground. Like a big guy, breaking tackles and going all the way 
That's Keondrick Melton. Not all the way, but way downfield. And Paul Cornwell, yeah, maybe he's grown the Wolverine beard too. He says, well, let's see what our defense can do next. Well, here comes Mr. Melton again, melting that defense and in for the touchdown. And Washington's going to get the win on the road, 34-14. to All right, in the East Central Conference, Wallace Rose Hill secured the conference title with a win over East Duplin last week. And James Keenan's lost to Southwest Onslow. But the Bulldogs wanted to finish off their outright title. And oh yeah, get momentum going into the playoffs. And oh yeah, beat their rivals in Warsaw. Well, the Tigers, they were looking to rebound in this one. And uh, it was a tight game. It was 15-all in late in the third quarter, but then Wallace Rose Hill went to work with some defense. Check out Ja'Cory Boney. Not only going to pick it off, but the deuce is loose and it's going to go 95 yards for the touchdown. And that had the folks from the south side of Duplin County firing off their air horns and all excited and up in arms. Defense would do it again. They come up with another pick to seal the deal. Wallace Rose Hill gets the win. 36-15 to win the conference title. Does that matter to you, Coach? I don't care about conference championships, and I don't really care about winning. I care about how we play the game. And But for these kids, it's a big deal. You want them to win. You want them to be happy. Um, we need to get Reed back healthy. Um, and our kids, we got to get hungry. Yeah, he thought maybe they were a little fat and happy after their win over East Duplin last week. So we'll see how they do as they go into the playoffs. All right, Southwest Onslow and East Duplin fighting for second place in the ECC. The two rivals met in Beulahville, and it was the slobber knocker we thought it was going to be. Up and down the field they went. Check out East Duplin with a beautiful block from Jeremiah Judge. That's going to spring Sean Davis. He would score on the next play as East Duplin would get the lead. And hey, check out Mr. Rainer celebrating his 80th birthday while his son yawns next to him. Hey, Chris, yeah, good to see you too. Then it would be Daryl Dorsey. Rhymes with horsey, that's what a stallion is. Southwest Onslow actually had the lead in this one. And East Duplin did not have one of their seniors, Elam Moore, out since the South Lenore game with that ankle injury. So they were relying on Sean Davis, the sophomore, 6'1", 188 pounds, although it looks like he's pushing closer to two bills. He would lead the charge in the second half. Charlie Dempsey's offense gave him everything they wanted, but ran out of time in this one. East Duplin gets the win over Southwest Onslow, 28 to 20, to clinch second place in that conference. Kinston and North Lenore not only playing for fifth place in the ECC, but also playing for the Lenore County Championship and the Jimmy Smith Cup. It all went on down at Bullock Stadium in Wheat Swamp. Here's your Brian Hanks stat of the day. The last time the Hawks beat Kinston at home was 1998, and it. Didn't happen again tonight because check out Antoine Jones all alone. This one was a fast and furious pace for Kinston in the first half. Looks like they were trying to break the team record. North Lenore trying to come out with their own offense as well. But here we go. Who else? But Adrian Simmons. He gets a nice gain here. And then there'd be a whole lot of touchdowns for Kinston after that. They roll to the win over North Lenore. Get a load of this final 66 to 42 as Adrian Simmons and company had no problems getting that victory at the swap. In the Coastal Plains Conference, north side of Beaufort County, the only team with a winning record in their conference, but Pamlico had won three in a row to at least challenge the Panthers for a share of that league title. They met in Bayboro. It was senior night for the Hurricanes. Here's your stat of the night for this one. The Panthers only allowing 71 points all year. That's eight per game. And their offense, pretty good too. Jamie Corporu, how about a 40-yard dash right up the gut? And just like that, Northside was on the board. They've got that two-headed running attack in Yeatsville. The other one, Sincere Columbus. Another Sincere touchdown for number 24. That made it 13 to nothing. Bobby Griffin trying to make sure his uh, team uh, not, not Bobby, but one of his assistant coaches trying to make sure their team would feeling good with a thumbs up. But Pamlico, Tariq Barber, check out this 27-yard score for the deuce on the loose. Pamlico right in it for a while, but then Northside comes back. Jamie Corpru going to finish this one off, and Northside is going to get the win. 41-6, and they are your undisputed Coastal Plains Conference champions. All right, let's check in on some other scores from the EP uh, from the CPC. It was Southside clinching second place with a 41-0 win over Jones and East Carteret. Boy, they put up a lot of points. That might have matched their season total 
67 at Lejeune. Carolina Conference, we started the night with a four-way tie for first place. Two of them, Hopton and North Duplin, met in Calypso, where the light was on and North Duplin was feeling good. And boy, they should have been feeling good because they had a big night from Carell Phillips, the sophomore. This kickoff return for a score. He would rush for almost 200 yards, and well, the fans were excited. They would watch him score four touchdowns. Hopton tried to uh, score themselves, but it didn't work out. North Duplin gets the win. 63-34. Brad Rhodes coaching for Hugh Martin, who was dealing with a family health issue. All right, we've got some more scores for you. It was Lakewood falling, uh, winning in a double overtime. That means they get the number one seed out of that conference. All right, time for our fans in the stands. Let's take you back to Beulahville, where it was youth night and all the kids. They can't wait to be Panthers one day. They were excited. So were we to show you more highlights. Hey, Jack, coming up on the Carolina Conference, Havelock trying to finish out their regular season undefeated and capture the outright Big Carolina Conference title. But they took on a J.H. Rose team that is coached by former Havelock quarterback Will Bland. And check out the highlights from Wilbur Jackson Stadium. It was at the field at Grand Stadium where it was senior night. Will Bland happy to be back home, but he wasn't happy to see this first place in scrimmage. Jonathan Williams. Take everybody out in an 80 yards for the score. And just like that, Havlock is on top. Low scoring game early on. But then that Rams defense. Zy King the pillar. He's gonna be the king and pick off the pass. And that's gonna set up LeBron Sharp. LeBron from 28 yards out, and Havlock gets the win over J.H. Rose to finish the season undefeated. 35 to 7 in the final. We now wait to see if they get one of the top seeds in the three Jacksonville tried to wrap up second place in the Big Carolina, just needed to beat their rivals. At Northside Senior Night for the Monarchs, how about Kenny and KJ Pollock and the rest of the seniors having a good time before the game? Uh, then when the game got started, look out, here comes Damon June. And then Northside for the touchdown. And then Northside says, um, we couldn't stop Damon. Right how about right Cameron Napier? He's going to come through with a sack for Northside. But Damari Grant's going to finish this one off as Jacksonville runs away with it. They get the win over Northside. 52 14, so they clinch second place in the Big Carolina Conference. There goes Damon. See ya. All right, battle for fifth place in that conference. South Central and D.H. Conley, final home game for Isaiah Crumpler and all of the Hollywood Crossroaders who are all dressed up ready for the weekend. And here comes Conley on offense. Cabrell looking for who else but number two, Isaiah Crumpler. And he's going to get it down inside the goal line. And then as Conley was lined up in the end zone, uh, here we go again. This time they're going to run it in. K.J. Harris takes it in for the score. Conley gets the win over the rivals from South Central, 40-21. Coastal Conference, White Oak had a chance to wrap up its first outright title since 1983. They just needed to beat Swansboro, who they'd already beaten once this season. Let's take it to the friendly city by the sea. Jonathan Burns' team made a short trip to Swansboro, where the Pirates were still looking for that first win of the season. And then... Well, they weren't going to get it because White Oak going to that Maggio guy. Caravion scores and gives us a little scary impression to the cameras. And then one more time, Mr. Maggio. He's going to take it in for the score. White Oak gets the win easily over Swansboro to celebrate their first outright conference title since 1983. As the quarterback, Joshua Smith, even getting into the scoring act for the Okies. All right, Richland's trying to rack up, wrap up second place in the conference. Travel to Dixon. Check out this beautiful shot by Buck Chambers he gave us. The aerial view of the south side of Onslow County. Well, here's your land view of Braden Anderson Sidbury keeping it in that single wing offense. And he scores the touchdown. Richland's, though, trying to come back in this one. Had that tough loss to White Oak last week. Pat Bird says, come on, Isaiah Graham. Graham takes it in for the score. Then he do it one more time. Richland pulls out the win over Dixon in the dogfight. 
to 27. Get your air horns out. West Carteret and Croatan fought it out for the Carteret County Championship. Both teams entering tonight with identical five and four records. Well, the Patriots, uh, they went to their running game. And when you do that, you know it's going to be Keegan Callahan. Keegan dives on in for the score. And then how about one more time? Jalen Hewitt battled a little stomach illness this week. He's okay here. He has got his guy in the touchdown pass. That is Landon Man. He is the man. West Carteret gets the win over Croatan, 30 to 19. Let's clean things up with our Connecticut Water System scoreboard. We'll check in our private schools. Parrot Academy falls at Faith Christian. Clinton stays undefeated. And Liberty Christian falls to Wayne Christian. A couple more highlights to show you, including the Battle Royale, our Willis Insurance Blitz Cam. Get you an up close and personal look at the band in Williamston. That would be the Martin County Riverside Band. Sounding good. Let's see what their highlights look like coming up. Neighbors Bertie and Martin County met up in Williamston. It's been a strange year for both schools. Martin County, of course, consolidating Riverside and South Creek's programs in the summer, then changed head coaches a couple of weeks ago. Well, Bertie had to play every game on the road this year while their field is being fixed. Let's take you to Williamston, where Bertie still had a chance to have a winning record if they could win at the Swamp. But Martin County's been playing well ever since the scene McGill took over. They had won two of three and getting the score right here, sneaking it in for the touchdown was Martin County. Bertie, though, trying to come back in this one. Uh, did you notice Nassim McGill uh, has done pretty well filling in for Mike Sartain, who had to step down because of some uh, personal health issues this year. Back comes Bertie. Boy, Darius Wesson has done such a great job this year keeping these guys involved. The TD pass to Mir Dempsey, who has had quite the season, and then goes over the fence, and then gets the flag for that. And then there's the full moon as well. Um, Eventually, sometime, there's the full moon. But Martin County would come back in this one. They're going to get the win over Bertie. 41 to 32. Let's hear from the Seaman Gill, who we think they will now make the playoffs in 2A. You know, man, these kids, man, they've been through a lot of adversity the last couple weeks. They kept fighting hard um, and just kept playing. I told the kids this is probably the biggest game you've ever played in your career. You know, we had a chance to get a second place seed in the conference. We are a two way school. Finish second or at least 500, you get a you get seated on the one line. And that's what our goal was. It's supposed to feel good to have a home playoff game next week. All right, we'll look forward to that. All right, let's check out Tarboro. They wrapped up their 12th straight conference title. The Vikings went into Washington County and took care of business. Jeff Craddock's squad hasn't lost a league game since 2011. Wasn't about to happen tonight. Kamiran McDowell Moore is going to score. Tarboro gets the 49 to nothing win. Let's check out our bonus game. Hopgood and Beargrass met in Martin County last night to decide the Atlantic Five Championship. And the Bears had no problem in this eight man game. Vance Keel is going to score here, and Beargrass is going to get the win 43 to 8. More highlights of this one online at WCTI12.com. Let's clean things up with our Connecticut Water Systems scoreboard. And we see that Northeastern finishes their season undefeated. And Edenton lost in a shootout at Hertford, 48 to 44. Hey, we start the playoffs next week. Let's get ready. Let's see what I look like then. <laughs> 